So why is internal linking so important? Well, it really shows what's important to the site, to both the user, but also the search engines. Okay, and I am going to read a little bit right from this thing. The number of clicks from the home page, page depth, and internal links pointing to a page determine that page's importance within the site. Okay, so, and I'm oversimplifying to illustrate a point. You know, you have your home page, you have your category pages, you have your subcategory pages, and then if we're talking e commerce, then you have your product pages. So, you know, your home page, for lack of a better word, most important. You know, category pages, second um, most important because they're the closest to the home page, so forth and so on and so forth. So that's why you're basically, you know, what's the hierarchy of your site? What page is the most important? You know, this is another thing that I run into with SEO all the time is that category pages, the client will have all everything listed there. And especially in like e-commerce sites, they'll have all their products there but they'll have no content on the page. So you're basically saying, hey, this is one of our most important pages, but we don't have any content. So we're not doing good user experience for the user or you, okay? Category pages without content are kind of silly, okay? Um, and need to be worked on, but that's, once again, a whole other webinar we can talk about, um, category pages. Um, but going back to my original point before, is that it's really important to think about the user experience, okay? So interlinking drives that user experience, whether you think about it, what it does at the end of the day. So, hey, I'm on this page for Blue Widgets. Where's the link to the accessories to Blue Widgets? You want to have a link there. You want to properly interlink. Hey, if I'm looking at accessories for Blue Widgets, I should have a link back to Blue Widgets. You know, I should have a link to Blue Widgets. So once again, how are you the user experience taking the person through helping them really improving their experience that's why interlinking is so extremely important and that more um companies and organizations really need to think about that with their site architecture you know and you see it all because it's so easy and that and, and and there is a little bit of laziness that comes in into this and you see it all the time especially and especially with wordpress sites you know, you have your five categories, and then you post your article. Um, you pick the category that it should go to, and then you call it a day. And then somebody can come to your site, click to the article, and then you just have a long list of articles to go through. And then you go into that article, and then the article, and, and that's it. And then you got to go, you know, really take time and think through the user experience. Hey, if somebody's reading this article, what other articles may they be interested in, or what, what are complementing articles this and that's the kicker too you know I, I bought up WordPress because there's a little bit of I feel a lot of laziness but on the same note there's tons of plugins with WordPress that you can put in that don't cost anything where you can pick hey here's other relevant articles to this articles when you post an article um, so interlinking is so important um, first off it allows the search engines to very easily go through your site see what's important see what's relevant and it's and you know judge the user experience and it's really important for your visitors because it's enhancing their user experience at the end of the day and then just a couple more points about interlinking breadcrumbs this is just a user experience thing you'll see this on a lot of sites especially e-commerce sites it's just at the top of the page it shows how that person's navigated breadcrumbs you know Hansel and Gretel how can you find your way home so you navigate it down into toy drones wait a sec how the heck did I get here I want to go back to the higher level page of drones toys and collectibles and you just click on that and you go back there it's a user experience some more resources here for you guys this the first one the a simple approach to optimizing website internal linking structure great article great tools if you want to start taking your interlinking more seriously this is really the way to go okay um, really a step-by-step -step approach to interlinking even gives you tools spreadsheets things you need to be using um, for inter interlinking highly recommend it okay um, there's also a good article that's been around for a while and they update it on a regular basis um, internal link building how to optimize your website um, using internal links both are extremely but if you want to start doing like an audit 
of your internal linking, where there's value, how to structure it. That first article, no exaggeration, step by step, gives you spreadsheets, gives you the tools you should use. Phenomenal resource, highly recommend it. So these are links coming into your site. Now, why are backlinks so important? Like I stated before, they represent a vote of confidence from one site to another. So back in the day, and I, <laughs> I'm saying that more and more the older I get, well, everything was about link exchanges, you know, and reciprocal links. It, you know, you could, now I'm talking way back, send out hundreds of emails and go, hey man, this is what I do, this is what you do, you link to my site, I'll link to your site. Everybody used to have link directories, um, even on their sites, resources page, all this fun stuff, and those were link exchanges, and it would help your rankings. But the reality is, it didn't speak to the quality of your site, it just spoke to the fact that you could send out a lot of emails to get people to link to your site because you're linking to your site, so there wasn't any real value. So that actually stopped working, I want to say around 2008, 2009. And what it really became more about is the one-way link. You know, getting that person linking to you, because that's a vote. Hey, if somebody's linking to you without getting anything in return, you must be a really good site, or why are they linking to you? You must be a really valuable resource, okay? Um, now, with that being said, I would never discourage somebody from, you know, as I previously talked about depth of content. If you have an article and you find a resource that's extremely valuable, to your article, reinforces your article, gives more depth to your article, makes it more useful to your reader, you should definitely link to it. That's not going to hurt you. What's going to hurt you is the large scale, like literally thousands of, you know, it's very easy to see what's natural and what's not. And it's very easy to see, hey, if you have a page that just has thousands of links on it, you know, but if you're linking out to relevant stuff, that's a good thing as well. That can help your rankings. But let's stay on the backlinks when it's coming to your site. Now, what should you look for in a backlink? They need to be relevant, and you really want them to be high quality. Okay. Um, now, high quality, you know, what's high quality? Well, there are tools out there to judge, you know, the quality of the site. Because if you're getting a link from a site that has thin content, links to anybody under the sun, links to other poor sites, you know, it's not a high quality site. It shows that they give up the links very easily. It's not a legitimate resource. It could be you just buying a one-way link. There's tons of things that go on there. So it needs to be of higher quality and from relevant sites. So once again, if you're selling spark plugs and you're getting a link from, a, you know, an auto body shop or, you know, a car dealer or a mechanic, that's extremely valuable versus the local gardening center, okay? Um, not really relevant, okay? And that's something that you, you'll see a lot, um, and it's not really valuable. There has to be some type of connection there. It has to make sense. So what type of backlinks should you avoid? Now, this goes back to another update that happened in 2012 that really rolled out and helped my demise on that one site as well. The Penguin update in 2012, okay? And that, while Panda was about thin content, Penguin was about links, okay? Now, nowadays, you can actually get penalized. So they started devaluing all these links, so people's traffic changed. But then also, they started penalizing people as well. Um, at first, I didn't really get on board with the, you know, I, I didn't really think they were penalizing people, but there's been some studies out there that they definitely did penalize some people, it looks like, for using some shady um, link tactics. So these are the types of backlinks that you should avoid, okay? Blog comments, press release with, opt oh, God, if I see one more company spend a ton of money on a press release thinking they're going to get some type of SEO benefit over it, I'm going to scream, Okay. I'm not going to go through the whole list. I'm going to stop. But the reason that's so, if you look at the one thing that runs through all those types of links, they bring no value to your visitor. Okay? So think about that. Having a link from a guest book brings no value to the reader. Having a link from a forum signature, no value to the reader. Okay? A blog comment, hey, this is a great blog, no value to the reader, okay? Um, so that's that's the underpinning of this all. Where's the value? 
How does this help the reader? How does this help your content? None of those things really help your content. You know, infographic, oh God, I three years ago, you know, if I saw one more infographic, it, it was infographic mania, okay? Those types of tactics really don't work, so don't waste your time. You really need to be focusing on what your user, um, your visitor, where do you have, everything you do should really be thinking about how do you improve that experience for them. And then just a little bit more back, back, backlinks is, well, how do you get those quality backlinks? It's not easy, okay? <laughs> Plain and simple. There's really not any trick um, to it. You just got to have good content and you need to give somebody a good reason to link to you. And you also need to find ways of making large group of content creators aware of your content. See, that's, see, that's, that's the thing. You're trying to gain one-way links from other websites. So you really need to be attracting the people that create those content, that content on the other websites to say, hey, I need to be linking to this stuff. Now, there's things you can do outreach, you can do PR, you can do all that stuff. But the reality is, at the end of the day, the one thing that we all have access to, and we all don't need a millions of dollars to, is social media and our email. Okay, um, we're big believers of this over at um, at LSC Digital Content Syndication. Now it's very democratic because the reality is you can put out a piece of content, you can put it out on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, YouTube, you can put it everywhere. If it stinks, nobody cares about it. If it's good, it's going to rise to the top. Now, you can put money behind it as well to get it out there. And unfortunately, platforms like Facebook, um, you really do. It's pay to play nowadays. The days, and we talked about that in our last, last webinar, you know, back a few years ago, Facebook was awesome for organic. Organic reach has pretty much disappeared. Um, so a lot of these are pay to play. But the reality is, this is what's available to most people. Um, also, email. If you have an opt-in list, reach out to those people. Um, get that content out there as much as possible. Um, you know, let's just use LSC Digital today. Um, so we do this webinar, and we have a YouTube channel, and, and all you guys, um, I've, and a few, I looked at the list, have been on multiple of our webinars. We'll do this webinar today. We'll cut up this webinar into little bite-sized pieces. We'll write content around this webinar. We'll create a page, have the video up, have content up, syndicate that content, get it out there, get people engaged with that content, so forth and so on. And that's really how you help your organic search rankings. And that's what's really available to most people when they want to really build out their content, um, their one-way links is create great content, get it out there, get it out across all channels. And there is a little bit of, you know, a lot of stuff is going to sink. Nobody's going to care. Other stuff, people are going to care. And then that goes into, and this is where the silos are really disappearing, because if you don't have great social channels, if you don't have engagement of your audience, you could put out great content. Nobody's going to see it unless you put a ton of money behind it. And then I would refer everybody back to our last webinar on how to build those audiences. But it's all very hand-in-hand. -hand. It's all content because at the end of the day, what is the Internet? The Internet is content. So it's about getting that content out there, getting those people engaged with the content.